Joker, Full Adieu, or Joker 2, as we will call it, is the highly anticipated sequel to the highly regarded Joker. And, oh man, I don't know how I feel about it. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back into another episode of We Need to Talk About. My name is Jack, and today, like I already said, we are talking about Joker 2, or Joker, Full Adieu. We're going to call it Joker 2. The sequel to Joker, starring Joaquin Phoenix, directed by Todd Phillips. This one adds Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. Um... Yeah, I got to see it last night at the or two nights ago from the uh, the time this goes out uh, at the IMAX fan screening, whatever, whatever you'll call it. And I still at this point don't fully know how I feel about it. We're going to get into my full review in a second. But first, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I appreciate all of you for checking out the video. And if you like what you see, I do reviews like this every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. But we're going to get into it. I gave Joker 2 a 78 out of 100. Now, you may be saying, Jack, that's not a bad grade. That's, you know, C+, plus, not, not bad. And not a bad grade whatsoever. Um, but considering how much I loved the first Joker, that was a bit of a disappointment because I was highly anticipating this movie. It was one I most anticipated of the entire year. Let's get down to the brass tacks. I'm not even going to to mince words here or, or anything. Um, I'm going to take you through my rating system, tell you why I graded things the way I did, and then we'll be on our happy, merry way. Performances. I gave a 14 out of 15 on my scale. There is no doubt that the performances in this movie are awesome. Joaquin is just as good as he was in the first movie. That is a... That, that, is, that is something that stays throughout the entirety of this movie. He is fantastic. He is transformative. It is, you know, he won the Oscar for the first one. I don't think he'll win an Oscar for this one, but he still has the chops that he had in the first movie. Lady Gaga is great as Harley Quinn. I have a lot of issues with her character in the writing, which we will talk about in a little bit. I feel like she was highly, highly, highly underutilized, but... When she did have the moments to shine, specifically the musical sequences where she gets to sing and gets to dance, she shines. And I do wish that they would have used her character more, would have fleshed out her character more. But again, it's in the right, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Entertainment, 7 out of 10. I think this is far from a boring movie. I was locked in for the entire runtime. Now, there were some instances where I did check my watch and say, hey, what time is it? And I have the mental clock of how long a movie's go gone for. Um... But for a majority, a vast majority of this movie, I was intrigued, entertained, and locked in. The musical sequences, while I don't think they fully work in terms of narrative and writing, are still entertaining. Like, they got a little repetitive by the time we got to the end, but when you start off, they are entertaining. And, and you know, I'm also someone that loves a courtroom drama, so I, I was entertained by that. I was fully locked in from start to finish. It is far from a boring movie, so that's why it got a 7 out of 10. 8 out of 10 for direction. Todd Phillips, you know he's cooking with gas when he's doing Joker. The first movie is absolutely fantastic. This one is just as good. It's not the best direction I've ever seen in my entire life, but he does bring yet another distinct vision to this film, and I do think he executes it well. It's the writing that I don't think is executed very well and where I have most of my issues, but I think Todd Phillips, as a, as a director goes, does does incredibly good work here and i thought that it was shot beautifully it is gorgeous to look at cinematography i gave it a five out of five it's gorgeous to look at the vision is clear the vision is there it's just the writing that writes it into a whole i gave the score four out of five i had no issues with it i thought it was good pacing i did give a three out of five like i said i was checking my clock at some instances in the film uh, i felt like the film at points got a little repetitive and i was checking my clock because i do have the internal clock of how long a movie has gone and you know you know the runtime, so you can keep an internal clock uh so I, I had some issues with the pacing i felt like it did drag on a little bit i felt like we weren't really getting anywhere and that's where a lot of the issues lie technical i gave a 14 out of 15 that composes set design sound design costume design editing and visual effects I had no issues here. Uh, I thought, like I said, it's technically a feast for the eyes. It's beautifully shot. It's got everything you could ask for in terms of the sets, the the costumes. The costumes are great. The makeup is fantastic. It's it's all really really well done. The technical is awesome. I gave it a three out of five for rewatchability. Um, 
But let's just get into the brass tacks. I always save writing for last because I feel like writing in general can make or break a film. And I kind of feel like it broke this sequel a little bit. I gave it an 8 out of 15, which is like average uh, to say the least. It does interesting things. This film takes interesting swings. I liked, and I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna get into a little bit of spoiler, spoilery territory here. I'm gonna try my best to not give away anything major because the film still hasn't come out yet for most people. It's gonna come out tomorrow at the time that you're watching this. Uh, so I'm gonna do, give generalized spoilers, but not anything super specific. So just bear in mind and fair warning. Um, I liked how the musical sequences were what's happening inside his mind and how he is interpreting uh, manipulation from Harley Quinn, how he is interpreting this tug of war that he has between his dual personalities of Arthur and, and Joker. And I liked how the musical sequences really were the Joker personality. Arthur was on the outside trying to control himself. And as he's, you know, he's taking his medication and things like that, he is suppressing the Joker personality in him. And the Joker personality only comes out for probably about the first half of the movie in these musical sequences. And I actually thought that was a, a pretty smart decision. I was very interested to see how the musical elements of this movie were going to be executed because it came out rather early in development that it was going to be a musical of some way, shape, or form. So I was very interested to see how they were going to execute that. And I did buy the musical sequences being the Joker personality being suppressed inside Arthur as he has taken over Arthur's body. Like, like, Arthur's personality takes over his body, and the Joker personality has been suppressed by the medication and other things, and those musical sequences are Joker expressing himself within Arthur's conscious, um, consciousness. I liked that. I thought that was very interesting. I thought that was an interesting route to take. What then kind of morphs is, one, I felt like the musical sequences, once we get into the second half of the movie, felt overly repetitive. I felt like we were rehashing a lot of what we, re what we did in the first half of the movie. And I felt like once the Joker personality was starting to come out of Arthur and he was, and that personality was starting to take over, I didn't think we needed to jump to musical sequences as much as we did. I felt like we overstayed our welcome in that aspect. This film had a very tough task. If I had to bet, if I were a betting man, I would bet that Todd Phillips only wanted to make one Joker movie. If I were a betting man, I would bet that he only wanted to make the original Joker. Because you told a clear, concise, full story in the first movie. But then it smashed records at the box office and did well and then they had to green light the second one i felt like they were written into a bit of a hole there how do you finish this story what more is there to add to this story i really felt and i saw some other critics that saw this as well i really like the sentiment of this is like i know uh i know the flick pick i watched his review last night he said this really feels more like joker 1.5 or a prolongated epilogue. It didn't feel so much like its own story. It really felt like it was, okay, we have to make this second movie. Let's just kind of add a little bit of stuff on after the movie, and then we'll go from there. I didn't fully, I did, I did not fully buy the this being its own story, uh, in terms of, like, you know, it being its own thing, having its own identity. I felt like we were rehashing a lot of the themes and a lot of the, you know, big moments were things that happened in the first movie. And that was really where I found a lot of issue with this. It felt incredibly repetitive from the start. 
it felt like a, we were hitting a lot of the hits. We were playing a lot of the hits. And then we kind of reached this conclusion at the end that I don't feel like was fully earned, if that makes sense. Um, and I didn't, like, buy the Harley Quinn storyline either. I get now that... Well, I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil it. But, but I, I did not buy the Harley Quinn storyline. I didn't. Uh, I feel like a lot of the reveals of Harley's background and things were just kind of brushed under the rug, said really quickly in some, in some quick exposition that was just kind of thrown in there. And we didn't really get to watch any of that get fleshed out. We watch Harley manipulate Arthur. We watch Harley manipulate Joker to try to get the Joker personality out, which in turn ends up, you know, the Joker personality comes out. And, and then seeing Arthur struggle with that on the surface level. And then Harley just kind of goes away. I, I didn't... I get what he was trying to represent, but I just didn't think it was executed that well. I felt like we spent the entire time building up this love story, and then it kind of just abruptly stops. She just goes away, and then it's kind of over. The ending of this movie, I think, really is what kind of... <sighs> ruins it for me in some way. Like, I don't want to say it ruins it for me, but leaves me with a sour taste in my mouth because everything just kind of happened really quickly. I didn't really feel like we got any real conclusion to the story and it just kind of ends. I didn't like how that was executed. I just feel like the script from start to finish had good ideas that were poorly executed. I would have liked to see more of the tug of war between Arthur and Joker. I would have liked to see more of that on the surface level, not just within his subconscious, but actually out in the real world. Um, I felt like they could have done a lot of really interesting things with that, and it just didn't work. It just it did, did not work. They tried to make it happen. It didn't happen. And a lot of it ended up just being kind of felt like a joke. It did. I saw some critics explain talking about it like that as well. It's like, it's just kind of a big joke, like the movie is. Not like that it's bad, but like, it's just kind of making fun of itself. Um, I don't fully buy that, but I can see where they're coming from. Um, it just left off with a very sour taste in my mouth. The through line for all of that is interesting ideas, poor execution, an abrupt ending that I didn't feel like was fully earned. That's kind of my biggest issues with this. A lot of it is very interesting but it just wasn't executed that well. And it was rushed. It felt rushed as well. Felt like we could have fleshed more of it out. I feel like Lady Gaga is underutilized as Harley Quinn. I feel like they didn't flesh her character out nearly enough. And they just kind of used her as a device uh, in the grand scheme of the film, really. Uh, so yeah, I, th th the writing took a lot away from me. I left confused. I left confused. Um, there's a reveal at the end of the movie. I'm not going to say what it is. It felt a little cheap to me. Um, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't like where the ending went and it just felt kind of cheap and like a cop out. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. That's all I'm going to say about it. Let me know down below in the comments. Am I wrong? Have you seen it already? What are your thoughts? Am I wrong in my thoughts uh, that I thought the ending was a bit che cheap and a bit... You know, just not executed well. Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments. If you've seen it already, get down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know why. Uh, we're all entitled to our opinions. I think a lot of people that I've seen kind of feel the same way I do. But if you really liked it, let me know why. And let's have a conversation. I want to hear your thoughts. Because there's a lot I like about it. I gave it a 78. That's not the worst grade I've given a movie this year. I gave, I don't even remember. I gave a movie last week a 48. So, not Megalopolis. I gave Megalopolis a 48 out of 100 last week. So 78 is not a bad grade. I think I'm just more disappointed than anything because I love the first one so much. That's probably where it comes in. But let me know. Let me know in the comments what do you think. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Like the video. Comment down below. Subscribe. Do all the things you do on YouTube. It really does help the channel grow. Uh, my goal is 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We've got a few months to go. Let's see if we can do it. I don't know. 
Let's just see. I'm just going to throw the goal out there. Can we get to 2,000 subscribers? Send this to a friend. Share the video. Do all that stuff. Follow me on social media down below in the, in the uh, description as well. I appreciate y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie and then come back and let me know what you thought. And we'll see you in the next video.